Perfect. So welcome everybody for to coming for this evening's presentation on stress management. Today our presenters will be Amber Baird and Robin Hansberger from Hansberger Physio, who will tell you a little bit more about themselves and a lot more about how to manage your stress better. So take it away, guys. Thanks so much for having us, Jennifer. Um, welcome to all of our participants on the line. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to point out a few housekeeping items for everybody today. Uh, first things first, we are recording the presentation. So if there's anything you want to look back on, uh, rewatch or share with any family members or friends, uh, we will be sending you a recording link for you to watch in the future. Um, there's also a chat function in this uh, Zoom call tonight. So if you'd like to ask a question, um, please feel free to use that. I will be monitoring it periodically or please feel free to unmute yourself, whatever you're most comfortable with. So without further ado, uh, we will just dive right into the topic. Um, we really want this to be interactive. So please feel free to ask any questions that come to mind. Um, again, there's no silly questions and we're here just to educate you guys and um, really make sure that you come away with some great takeaways tonight. So for those of you who don't know us, I'll just give you a little bit of a background on Hansberger Physio. Um, Hansberger Physio is all about helping you feel better, live better, work better and perform better. Whether you have a new injury, you wanna take your game to the next level, or you're just finding it harder to move than you used to, Hansberger Physio Plus can get you to being your best you. We will not only treat your current pain, but we will address the cause and empower you with the right plan for obtaining long-term results that you can celebrate. Our difference, regardless of what we're talking about, the subject matter, who we're treating, whether it's a professional athlete, um, a grandmother who wants to play with her kids, someone who owns their own business, um, anyone out there, personal empowerment is key to living a healthy life. Um, so we believe a whole body approach is key to injury prevention and recovery. Personal empowerment helps to achieve long-term results. And with the right plan, you will live a healthy life. Now we do a lot of different things for a lot of people. Um, and we're here tonight to talk about stress, but Taking care of the body is a big part of stress management, and that's something that Amber is going to get into tonight. Um, there is a lot of different things that go into that, and we do a lot of different things for a lot of people. So we provide physiotherapy, massage therapy, athletic therapy, osteopathy. Those are our core services, really. But everything we do is around injury recovery, but most importantly, injury prevention. We work with those who've been in motor vehicle accidents, have workplace injuries, who suffered from concussions who really want to achieve their um, dreams from a sports performance perspective. We do a lot of cognitive and vision training, really focus a lot on corporate wellness, active aging programs, fitness, personal training, strength and conditioning, and Pilates. We also do a lot of foot care orthotics as well as compression therapy. So a lot of different things for a lot of people, but really we're here tonight to talk about stress. Um, for those of you who are in the Markham area, uh, we do have a location there. So if there's follow-up questions or anything that you want further advice on, we can definitely work with you locally. We also have uh, locations in Aurora, Burlington and Stouffville. Um, and we have a number of corporate sites um, for people who may work at Apotex, Sanofi Pasteur, William Osler Health Systems, um, members of the Toronto Cricket Club, as well as the Oven Bird Golf Club seasonally up in Muskoka. So lots of reach, but we also provide home visits. So if there's something that you need extra help with, we do offer that as well. Um, but most importantly, I'm super excited tonight to introduce to you guys, Amber Baird. So she is our physiotherapy resident um, and works out of our Markham location. So Amber has a personality that's contagious. She joined us in January and it's just been amazing to have her join the team. Amber graduated from the University of Brighton with a master's in physiotherapy. Prior to this, she graduated from Western with a degree in kinesiology. And as a former national level competitive swimmer, Amber is interested in injuries experienced by swimmers and athletes and has experience working with a wide range of athletes from a number of different sporting domains. Oopsies, sorry about that. Additionally, Amber's interested in injuries affecting the young and developing athletes, female athletes, and has also conducted a number of different research projects in both areas to further inform her practice. So please join me um, in sending a warm welcome to Amber. Um, and really tonight, she's going to talk about finding ways to manage and reduce stress to feel better, live better, work better, and perform better. So without further ado, Amber, I'm going to pass it over to you. Yep. Hi, everyone. Um, I hope you're having a good evening. Um, so today we're going to be looking at stress management. And so kind of starting off, just looking into what stress is. 
So stress is the body's response to a perceived threat, resulting in discomfort, anxiety, emotional tension, and difficulty in adjustment. So when a stressor presents, it causes a disruption to the body's homeostasis. So that's our trying to live. Sorry, am I still with you? Yeah, you are, you're here. Oh, sorry, my computer screen, everything just went black for a second there. Are you back? <laughs> yep, I'm back, sorry. Oh, sorry okay. um, so when a stressor presents, it causes a disruption to the body's homeostasis. So that's our body's natural way of trying to maintain balance and trying to regulate kind of a nice balanced even keel. Um, and then it has to, when a stressor is present, it has to try to find ways to resolve the stressor. So there are three stages of stress. The first is the alarm stage and it's triggered by exposure to the stressor. This engages our flight and fight mechanism, um, which is conducted through our autonomic nervous system, which controls all the body processes that happen automatically, such as breathing and our heart beating. This autonomic nervous system has two channels, the parasympathetic, the parasympathetic system, excuse me, is oh, our rest. Fun, Peter, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's our rest and digest. So that's where we ideally optimally like to be in a calm state of mind. However, when the stress is present, we engage our sympathetic nervous system and that in turn charges our adrenaline throughout the body and we go into that flight and fight response system. In this system, when the system is engaged, you can feel um, your heart beating faster, sweaty palms, um, sweaty forehead, and some nervous fidgeting. So it's not the most comfortable state to be in. As stress progresses, we go into the next stage, which is resistance. And this is where our body tries to fight back and resolve the stressor we're faced with. In this stage, it tends to last longer. And even without the resolution of the stressor, we can begin to feel calmer as our body tries to regulate and maintain homeostasis. If the stressor doesn't resolve, however, we are constantly placing extra strain in our body, which is how we get into the third and final stage of stress, which is exhaustion. In the exhaustion stage of stress, when the stressor has become chronic presence in our lives, the body reaches a level of depletion and can no longer cope. This is where we begin to see the breakdown of systems, injuries, and disease in the body. I'll go to the next slide. So it's important to know that stress can be a very beneficial and healthy part of life. The initial stage of stress, that alert stage, can be positive as it keeps us alert and motivated and ready to avoid danger. This can be positive when you're taking a test, completing a project for work, or competing in sports. The stress response of the body keeps our brains awake and engaged and pumps extra blood to our muscles and heart so they are ready to perform. What is important to note about these types of stressors is that once they are completed and done, your body is able to return back to homeostasis in a balanced level and unwind and relax as the stressor has been removed. As individuals, we all uniquely process stress differently. The more familiar we are with the situation and the more comfortable we feel, we have, or the more, sorry, the more control we feel we have over the situation, we're usually able to process the stress more positively and reduce the time that we're under stress. When we're able to actively cope, we feel as if we're in control of the outcome and the stress is minimized. Like if you had a presentation at work, you would put in time to prepare and plan and feel as if you could control the situation. Unlike a work presentation, the stress of managing kids, work, money, and relationships is never ending and unpredictable. Over these times, oh, so over time, these uncontrollable stressors can become chronic, and this is what leads us to the exhaustion stage of stress. Here we often get trapped in the perpetual cycle of poor sleep, fatigue, and decreased health, which is hard to overcome. It is estimated that 75 to 95% of all doctor's visits are due to chronic stress-related poor health. And this is why it's so crucial to have strategies in place to help manage stress so we can live and perform at our best. We'll go to the next slide. So stress is controlled by our autonomic nervous system and our endocrine system. The interaction between these two systems produces hormones such as epinephrine, norepinephrine, and cortisol. The result of these hormones is a cascade of physiological reactions. 
epinephrine and norepinephrine are involved in the initial stress response and produce our flight and fight response. When the stressor is chronic and perceived as negative, cortisol is rele released, which is involved in weight gain and decreased immune function. So starting with the brain and nervous system, chronic stress can affect our ability to concentrate and lead to changes in mood, cause headaches. Additionally, it can affect our mental health um, and then lead to depression, anxiety, and insomnia. Moving down to look at our cardiovascular system, our heart, chronic stress can increase our risk of hypertension, stroke, and heart attack. Cortisol also leads to inflammation in our blood vessels, placing extra stress on the heart to pump and circulate blood throughout the body. Throughout the body, chronic stress can also cause tense muscles and joint pain. That's probably the one you see the most of, isn't it, Amber? Yeah, definitely. So in the clinic, we can definitely see an increase in joint and muscle pain. And a lot of times we have tests to look for stress in the body and looking at that sympathetic nervous system response. And we see that most of our patients who come in with pain have a positive response that their sympathetic nervous system is engaged, showing that they're in a high amount of stress right now. Um, looking more at the immune system, which is negatively affected by the production of cortisol, so our chronic stress hormone, um, and this leads to a decrease in our ability to identify viruses and infections and weakens our response to fight these illnesses. So this is really crucial to know as most of us are experiencing higher levels of stress right now due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And unfortunately, that stress, which has now unfortunately gone on for a year, may be having negative effects on our immune system, which we'd all like to be at its utmost when a virus is kind of circulating in the community. So experiencing long-term stress and anxiety can lead to these cortisol levels being high and inhibit the critical function of our immune cells. Additionally, there can be effects to our skin, um, gut, and reproductive system all quite negatively. Thank you. So what can we do to help manage stress and promote our health? Exercise and physical activity are const consistently found in research to reduce stress and allow people to feel calmer. Additionally, research has found that these calming effects last for several days, so they're quite effective at reducing stress. How does it work? Being physically active helps improve the, the way the body handles stress. So right after exercising, the hormones responsible for producing stress are lowered and the neurotransmitters such as dopamine and serotonin, which are our feel good hormones are elevated. So we kind of get a reciprocal shift in our stress and an elevation in our feel good hormones. People also who consistently exercise show higher thresholds for producing stress hormones, meaning they can handle more without the same output of these negative hormones being circulated. The second way that exercise can help prevent and reduce stress is that it provides an escape away from our daily stressors. So having that time to get a mental brain break and unwind and decompress away from our busy lives helps to provide a sense of calm. And it also helps to re-energize your body for tackling these stressors once you return. Studies have found that even when compared to just sedentary rest, exercise is much better at helping us to manage and reduce stress. I can actively speak to that. I was, uh, I had a crazy day and um, getting outside before this webinar and just going for a light walk, um, nothing super intense, um, but it definitely helped me to feel more relaxed, um, not focus as much on work and, and have some me time as well. So I can definitely um, agree that it definitely, I, I see the effects, the positive effects of exercise in my life. Definitely. And as much as at the end of the day, it sounds nice to kind of sit on the couch and watch a nice TV show. And that can be a great way to manage our stress. But the physical activity and numerous research projects has seen that it's the better alternative to that. So incorporating a bit more movement into our relaxation is really important. One thing that we do um, preach on in the clinic um, and many different varieties is movement is medicine, any kind of movement. Um, mm -hmm. So whether that's stretching, um, going for a walk, and, and I know Amber's going to get more into this, but that's something for you guys all to keep in your back pocket um, as you go throughout different parts of your day um, is movement is medicine. Definitely. 
and go on to the next slide. Perfect. So when trying to incorporate more physical activity and exercise into your daily life, it's important to know where to start. It's recommended that we all get 150 minutes of moderate intensity, intensity aerobic exercise per week or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity exercise. So this works out to about five sessions, about 30 minutes. But one strategy to kind of help incorporate exercise and physical activity is breaking it up into shorter bouts. This can be easier to fit into your routine. And many people find that doing 10 to 15 minute sessions, maybe one at lunch, one in the morning, or one in the evening is a great way to add exercise into an already busy routine. An additional benefit of breaking up exercise into these shorter durations is that it provides multiple breaks throughout the day to have some mental relief and decompression time away from your stressors. When choosing which exercise to help with stress, just like Robin mentioned, all, med or all movement is medicine and all exercises are beneficial, but in particular, aerobic exercise such as walking, running, biking, and swimming have been shown to be the most effective at reducing stress. As well, yoga and Tai Chi type exercises, which require very little equipment and a flow can sort of be done in 15 minutes have been shown to be effective in reducing the physiological, so those hormone markers of stress. However, it's important to remember that exercise and physical activity don't have to be unpleasant. You wanna pick an activity that you enjoy and get the most satisfaction out of, and that'll lead to that long-term habit-changing incorporation of exercise. And as well, activities such as exercise, or sorry, such as walking, gardening, and cleaning can also help to improve our overall fitness and health. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if anybody on this call or anybody in your friends or family circle is looking to get back into exercising and they may have pre-existing health conditions, it's really important to be cleared by your doctor if you have a heart condition before getting back into moderate to vigorous exercise. It's not to say you're not going to be able to, um, but you just want to make sure you do these things properly. Mm -hmm, definitely. There we go. So going back to that immune system, which we addressed in an earlier slide and how stress so negatively impacts our immune system, exercise, as well as working to manage our stress helps to boost our immune system, which is really critical during the time we're living in right now. So while we continue to deal with the effects of COVID-19 and its negative effects on our stress levels, an additional benefit of exercise is how it positively affects our immune health. One single session of exercise causes a massive and instantaneous mobilization of our immune cells to the bloodstream. And this means that our immune cells are better able to recognize and respond better to viruses which may enter our system. Also by working our muscles, we help to create new immune cells and work on maintaining our existing cells and making them healthier. These effects are cumulative. So that's one single session, but over time, as you begin to add exercise more routinely into our schedule um, with consistent physical activity, we see improved immune function and reduced reduction in the stress causing hormone cortisol, which negatively impacts our immune response. More and more in the clinic, we've been seeing people um, that have become more sedentary with COVID-19 and their stress levels and consequently their immune health have been impacted. So finding new activities and finding ways to incorporate physical activities such as a daily walk are great ways to kind of help clear your head and unwind and then secondarily get the benefits of an improved immune system. I like that. That combination makes exercise a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. And I think you're addressing more than one thing there. So it's really beneficial. Great. So it's important, just like Robin mentioned earlier, to kind of, if you have any kind of um, existing health conditions to get cleared by your doctor about which exercises might be safe for you, as well as most people have kind of become a bit more sedentary during COVID-19, it's important to build exercise into your routine and start slow and gradual. Um, pick activities that you enjoy and are safe for your body. It's important to start every sort of bout of activity, even if that's just going for a walk around your neighborhood with about a three to five minute warm up, focused on moving all your joints and muscles, getting your body warm and assessing how you feel that day. 
it's important to be in tune with how your body is feeling. And you can do that during your warm up and then adjust your workout intensity from there. So if things feel a little bit off or you feel tired, it doesn't need to be the day that you do a max effort anything. It can be the day that you work on restoring um, your movement and just taking care of your body. Um, as you build, it's important to create some variety in your program and progress your workout um, and physical in intensity. Um, you can increase the intensity, duration, or resistance, um, and that's a great way to change up your workout. Every four to six weeks, it's important to check in with your routine and see if you are able to increase one element and continue moving forward. So this may be increasing the weight you lift or going for five minutes longer. Setting some short and long-term goals can help with this as well, as you have a clear goal in mind to work towards. These goals help to keep you motivated and committed. One example of a short circuit that can be done at home is picking three to five exercises and doing each for one minute. You'd wanna repeat this circuit three to five times. And by doing a circuit routine, you're able to kind of minimize the time, but also get the cardiovascular benefits on your heart, as well as strengthening your muscles. You can choose in a routine like this to work on one area, such as your arms or your core, or you can pick a variety of exercises to do a full body routine. These workouts are similar to like a HIIT workout where you're able to conduct them in a short amount of time and they're shown to be really easy to kind of implement because they can uptake anywhere from five to seven minutes as well. Finding the seven minute workout on YouTube is a really good um, and they have a lot of variety in the workouts they show and it's a great one to fit in when time isn't on your side. That is definitely the, the circuit training and the high intensity. Um, mm -hmm. I find are some of the ones that make me feel the best afterwards um, because you really feel that sense of accomplishment um, because uh, it, you, it just sort of, it challenges you in many ways. Um, yeah. Those are some of my personal favorites. Yeah. And they tend to, it's a great payoff for being such a short duration, but you work so many systems throughout them. So a lot of payback from a short amount of time. Now, one thing to point out for everybody on the phone. So physiotherapists are trained in exercise prescription. So if there is something that you're looking to accomplish, you're looking to start, but you, you don't know where to start or you want to do it safely, Amber can definitely help you with those goals. So physiotherapists not only provide manual based therapy, but they also provide exercise prescription. Um, so if that's something that you guys want further advice on, Amber can definitely guide you through that and create individual programs for you to do at home. So there's lots of different options out there. And I know Amber's going to go through some more of those as we um, get on in this presentation, but physiotherapists can help in terms of specific customized exercise programs based on previous injuries or existing health conditions and things like that. Mm -hmm. And that's really important to notice people are hopefully getting back into the gym or back into activities. We've had so much time off right now that helping to prevent injury by slowly and gradually getting back in with the help of a physiotherapist, you can do that and without injury, hopefully. Um, so introducing exercise back in, or into your routine. So most of us know that exercise is beneficial, but implementing it into our daily routine is tough when life gets in the way. It can seem like there isn't enough time in the day. So some strategies which have shown to be successful for people to increase their physical activity are to do co-activity with your children. So this consists of the parents facilitating activities which can be done together with children. And in this scenario, parents are able to model an active lifestyle and encourage the whole family to be healthier together. Um, this is shown as well to kind of influence children's behavior and allow them to develop lifelong physical literacy skills and healthy behaviors as they grow older. Um, additionally, in co-activity, some parents may choose, instead of having the children participate in the exercise, having them do some sort of creative activity, such as coloring or playing with toys, but in the same room so that child care can go on while um, physical activity is taking place. Technology is another great way to kind of help implement um, exercise into your daily life. 
um, from equipment like Pelotons to Fitbits and YouTube workout videos. There's some sort of technology that anyone can access and that's best for you. Um, different types of wearable technologies, such as a Fitbit, allow us to track our progress. And they also help to provide a sense of community and connect with friends. So uh, apps like Strava and Z Swift, where you're able to see where your friends are at, provides that social engagement that many of us are lacking right now. And it also helps to provide a sense of accountability and motivation to stay um, consistent with your exercise routine. Um, the third way of making sure that you're able to introduce exercise into your routine is reorganizing your schedule. It's important to have a, um, important to value physical activity and prioritize it in your schedule. So finding time when particular children are sleeping or at daycare or involved in structured activities would be a great time to implement your own physical activity. And it's important to advocate for yourself and recognize that this is a priority and that by implementing physical activity long term, it'll not just benefit you, but also the people around you. Um, so additional types, we've kind of covered the traditional ways of exercising and getting physical activity. Some additional ways to help with stress management um, are breathing exercises. So a lot of us kind of through our day-to-day -day, um, routine don't take time to conduct some deep breathing exercises. So sitting up tall, taking time to slowly inhale and particularly having your hands close to your diaphragm to so the bottom of your ribs so you can feel your yourself taking deep breaths in for a count of five and exhaling for a count of five. And you want to kind of repeat this for about five breaths total. Um, we don't want to be getting to that lightheaded stage, but obviously taking the time to feel your breath and feel your lungs expanding. Um, this helps to reduce stress and calm the brain and body. And when you breathe deeply, it sends a message to your brain to calm down and relax. Um, social connection is also really important. So we talked about how technology um, through some of the physical activity apps can help, but especially right now, apps like FaceTime and Zoom like this are really important because socializing helps to provide a sense of safety and security and balance out the, that cortisol, that chronic stress hormone, um, and has been shown to help with stress reduction. Progressive muscle relaxation is another way to help with stress. So this can be done lying on your back, either in your bed or on a, a comfortable surface. And you can work either head to toe or um, toe to head. And you work by sort of squeezing the muscles, starting at your toes, um, holding that for about five seconds and then allowing them to relax. Then you would move to the next highest area. So if you started at your toes, then maybe working through your lower legs, contracting the muscles, and then allowing them to relax, and then working all the way up your body chain. Lastly, mindfulness is another way to kind of help manage stress. So mindfulness is taking the time to deliberately focus on the tasks that you are doing and taking time to silence your mind and meditate. So for lots of us, we kind of rush through a lot of our day-to-day -day activities and don't even take the time to consider what we're doing and be mindful to that moment. So strategies like every meal, thinking about what you're doing and why you're eating the food you are and taking the time to enjoy it is a great way to start implementing mindfulness. Or sometimes people do that with brushing their teeth, so daily little habits of implementing more mindfulness into your routine. I really like all of these, Amber, um, and I just wanted to highlight a few ways that people may be able to start these um, new exercises or make sure they're continuing to do them. So I'm not sure if anybody has an Apple Watch or something of that nature, but there is actually a breathing setting that if you go longer than um, 60 seconds, it will remind you to breathe. So we don't even realize throughout our day that we stop breathing at times, whether it's receiving a stressful email from work or um, thinking about something particularly stressful you might have to do um, or something related to family finances. There's different stressors for all of us, um, but really making sure that you are paying attention to a slow, consistent breath, um, but also breathing through your diaphragm, not chest breathing, um, what we call shallow breathing. So those are some things um, that are, are good for you guys to think about. Um, a lot of us have experienced Zoom fatigue or FaceTime fatigue. And 
it almost feels sometimes for me anyway, that I don't really have that much to talk about when I am connecting with friends over virtual um, different platforms. So what we started doing as a family and as different friend groups is actually playing virtual games. Um, so it's a way to connect um, without feeling like you don't have much to talk about because quite frankly, there's not a lot of new stuff going on um, as opposed to talking about negative things or simply just COVID. Um, there's lots of fun things you can do virtually, um, whether it be games like Clue or things like that. So keep that in mind as well, even if you feel like you may not um, have anything to say. Um, there's games and there's puzzles and there's Sudokus and all these different types of things, even chess and checkers that you can play virtually. Um, and lastly, my favorite time to do the progressive muscle relaxation is just before bed. Um, mm -hmm. Somehow it just knocks me out cold. Sometimes I don't even wake it, make it all the way up to my face. Um, so I don't know what that says about me. I'm obviously just, uh, it, it really works for me. So um, I, I really like those suggestions, Amber. And I think you, you really hit it spot on when talking about mindfulness as well. Thanks. Yeah, I think one great way as well we found is to do phone calls and go for walks. So we're all in different, my, my friends are all in different places, but to be able to get that little bit of physical activity and the social connection is a really great way to kind of implement two things at once. So lastly, some additional ways to help combat stress. Um, the first through diet. So limiting caffeine, alcohol, and refined sugars. Caffeine just generally tends to make you feel wound up, which can make stressful situations seem even more intense. So if you do like to drink a lot of coffee like I do, or at least reducing the amount and trying to stop at in through the afternoon, especially because you don't want that reciprocal effect going in to affect your sleep schedule, which can also so negatively be affected by stress. Um, sleep. So um, it's important, obviously, to get a good night's sleep and sleep tends to be one of the um, areas which is chronically affected by chronic stress. And it's part of that cycle of not having enough sleep, perpetuating further stress in our lives. Um, so some ways to help are to increase your exposure to daylight. So making sure that you're um, getting outdoors or sitting yourself near a bright window, um, especially early in the morning, early in your day, it helps to regulate regulate our sleep and wake cycles as well. Just like Robin mentioned, doing some of those relaxation exercises and reducing screen time before bed are ways to help yourself and facilitate a deeper night's sleep. Um, your work habits. So I know a lot of us are working from home right now. So trying to have a defined location for where you do your work. I know it's not always feasible for many people, but trying to either maybe take that laptop or take the phone out of the bedroom if that is your workspace or setting up a defined area where you conduct your work and then you can leave that area when it's time to rest and relax. Um, and then creating boundaries. So as well, I think a lot of people have found by having their workstation at home, they're working longer hours, they feel like they can reply to just one more email because the computer is right there, trying to set those boundaries to make sure you have enough adequate time to um, decompress and stress and um, sorry, relax at, um, after and making sure you have the time for physical activity and connecting with people. And I think that's the biggest thing that we can talk about tonight, if there's going to be one takeaway, is the importance of setting boundaries, um, whether it's boundaries with work, whether, whether it's boundaries with your lovely device that I know we all have and we use way too much, um, whether it's boundaries for yourself. Um, if you know you need to get a workout in or be physically active, some people react very well to schedules. So some people prefer to plan these things. Some people don't react well to too much scheduled or, or stringent things. So it's really about understanding yourself, that mindfulness that Amber spoke about before, um, and giving yourself different times for different types of things, creativity, work related things, family related things, friend related things, when you really kind of focus on different things with your brain, um, and activate those different senses, um, there is a lot that we can do to reduce our overall stress. Definitely. So honestly, Amber, I think that was one of the most insightful webinars that I've ever been a part of for Hans Berger. So big thank you to you for taking time to really 
dive into what stress is all about um, and how to really recognize stress in yourself um, and talk about what those different stressors may look like because they're different for all of us and what might be stressful on one day for us might not be stressful on the other day. So that's one thing I really want to share with you guys as well is it's okay to feel stressed out with something new in your life. Um, and it's okay to react to that stress. Um, but looking back to reflect on, on your reactions to stress and how you're going to deal with those in a positive way um, is, is really quite important. So I did want to open up um, the chat function or if people want to unmute themselves and ask some questions. Um, I do have one for you um, from the chat, uh, Amber. Um, so for most of us, we were quite active in our younger lives, being involved in sports and university and things like that. Um, starting into getting back into sort of work life, how do you help yourself stay active? Like you've just started your new job. What do you practice for yourself in order to keep up that uh, level of activity? I think it's key to find those activities that you enjoy. And then additionally, they are hopefully activities that involve being physically active. I spent so much of my younger years being kind of prescribed exercise because that's what I needed for my sport. And now I'm trying to find activities such as like skiing and cycling, which I never really, I always kind of thought of exercises as prescribed thing. I would go to the gym and do three reps of this. And that was my exercise, but I'm finding that going for a cycle or going to go ski are physically active ways, but I really enjoy doing them. And that's a much easier way to implement it, especially after a long day at work um, and things like that. That's a, that's a great one. Do you have any personal goals for yourself in terms of trying a new sport um, or anything that you're actively working on that others might be able to relate to? Um, well, skiing is quite new to me. I hadn't done it in the last 10 years or so, not since I was little. So the last um, few weekends since skiing has reopened, I've been trying to do that. I'm working on coming out of my snowplow type situation oh, and working on getting nice parallel skis. So I have some drills I'm working on on the baby hills. Um, so that's what I'm working on. And it, it's really exciting to have an activity that you're new to as well. And then you have a passion to see other people doing it so much better and it gives you that motivation to keep working on it and continue to get better and better and every time I get out there it's an additional physical activity that I can do that's awesome it's great to hear that um, I know sometimes as we get older we might be nervous to try something new or um, feel embarrassed that we might not be good enough but at the end of the day it's about challenging your brain and challenging your body and releasing some of those positive endorphins. So that's fantastic. Definitely. I always find as much as you're tired by the end of the day, you always feel so much better once you've done any sort of physical activity or exercise. And that reward kind of keeps you going and going back to it. Absolutely. And I guess that's one, um, thing that we want to share with you guys as well. Try work, try exercises of any variety, any movement at different times of day to see what makes you feel best. Um, so, so that's one thing too, is if something's not working for you time-wise, um, or you're not feeling motivated at a certain time of day, try something else. Um, we do have another question here. So, um, this is, comes from someone with epilepsy. So is there certain exercises be best to make your brain stronger? Um, there are definitely different exercises to make your brain stronger, especially here at the clinic. We have a lot of um, exercises and different technology we use for our post-concussion um, clients. And I um, those work to help better um, improve our brain and body connection. And so we work on visual tracking and tracking objects, and it helps to kind of sharpen our brain and sharpen our reaction time and our skills that way. Um, as well as implementing then physical activity with these technological devices to um, improve that. And I think just with epilepsy or with any other condition, getting cleared by your doctor, but then also slowly and progressively adding exercises that you feel comfortable. And that's why we try to keep that progression to about four to six weeks. So you're able to kind of assess how you feel and then progress from there. So that's, that's great, Amber. And, and I personally, um, 
I use a lot of this technology. So we have something called the Vision Performance Center. Um, and this is really what we use for baseline concussion testing, concussion recovery, working with athletes, those who are going through active aging, those with Parkinson's, dementia, those kinds of things. Um, and for me, even someone who works on my computer um, and being an athlete growing up, I find using these vision training and vision performance center tools really beneficial to offset some of my strength training. So it's a great brain exercise. And quite mm. honestly, sometimes I'm more tired from those sessions than working out in the gym. Definitely. Now, last question here before we let everybody go. Um, are there any specific exercises that might help me control my mental well being? Yep. So I would suggest um, going back to an earlier slide that aerobic exercise is really beneficial. And, and I know there's quite numerous studies that have looked at aerobic exercises ability to help with mental health conditions such as depression, and anxiety. So um, aerobic exercise is things that kind of keep our heart rate elevated, but at about 70% elevated. So not as if we were going to go for a sprint in our max elevation, but like a light um kind of a brisk pace where we're able to hold a conversation but not um kind of out of breath and unable to speak so you're looking for that sort of intensity when doing aerobic exercise um and then up at that point it's kind of up to you what you prefer best whether that be swimming or walking or cycling um but things that you're able to do for about 30 minutes at a time um, as well, going back to what we were talking about, that social connection. And if you're able to have a group that you do that with either in post COVID times or, um, a, um, some sort of technological connection with people, as you do that exercise would be able to kind of help connect you as well as get the, um, benefits of physical activity. One thing as well, um, for this specific question is a gratitude journal. So um, something I've been practicing um, through COVID, it's, it's hard. It was hard for the start for me to find things I was grateful for because there was so much negative news. So one thing I would do, um, whether you want to purchase a gratitude journal from Indigo or chapters, or simply get some blank paper and put it by your bed and write three things that you're grateful for before you fall asleep, or first thing when you wake up, things you're looking forward to in the day. So that's one thing. Um, meditation, um, where you do focus on some of those breathing techniques. Breathing properly calms all of your systems. And it really, when you're focusing on your breath, your brain stops thinking about other things. So there's the meditation, there's the breathing, but there's also yoga with, with flow type movements that Amber was talking about as well. Um, so I really would encourage you to practice the, the art of gratitude um, through gratitude journaling or whether it's something you wanna put into your phone um, as well as that yoga meditation and breathing. That, that's a really great start. Um, maybe before doing something super uh, more, more um, aer aerobic, um, if it's not something you feel like you can handle at this point in time. I hope that really helps to answer your question. Um, and quite honestly, if that didn't, or you wanted to chat further um, and get some more advice, um, Amber is um, available to, um, chat with you guys further uh, via email. Um, so her email is amber, A-M-B-E-R at hansbergerphysio.com. So if you guys wanna follow up specifically, if there was questions that you didn't get answered, um, maybe you didn't feel comfortable asking in a group setting, Amber would love to chat further with you. Um, also, if you prefer to come see her in person in the clinic, um, you can do that as well. Um, so we just wanted to say a big thank you to Jennifer for hosting us this evening. Um, again, big thank you to Amber and big thank you to all of our participants for your great questions. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, everybody. We hope you have a great evening and stay safe out there. Take care. Bye.